Good morning and welcome. My name is Reverend Gilbert Ham Jr. and I'm one of the associate ministers here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. And once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our online worship experience. I first want to start, start off and say Happy Resurrection Sunday. We're so glad that you've taken this opportunity to worship the Lord with us. And I had the opportunity to introduce our pastor, Pastor Gilbert S. Ham Sr. He's going to be sharing a message this morning, the first Resurrection Sunday. Oh, I know you're going to enjoy this message. So you want to go ahead and grab a friend, grab a co-worker, and let them know that the Word of God is about to be preached. You know what time it is. Let's go.
got a worship leader, Minister of Lawrence Lardell Sr., Reverend Dr. Sarah L. Brown, Minister Joyce Hale, Reverend Gibbard S. Hand Jr., to our Chairman, Deacon Marion Brown, Chairman Trustee John McQueen, to our official staff, to Mrs. Byron Ham, to Mrs. Marlo Ham, to Mrs. Victoria Wydell, to the Ebenezer Baptist Church family, and to all of our guests. A happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Those of you who can, will you please stand for the reading of God's Word. I invite your prayerful meditation to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 7. St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through If you have it, say amen. amen. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, Lo, I have told you. You may be seated. Sweet Lord, and help us to listen. For I ask it in your name. Amen. Verses 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Speak, Lord, and help us to listen, for I ask it in your name, amen. amen. Subject for this morning, the first Resurrection Sunday, the first Resurrection Sunday. This is the morning when the Christian church celebrates what we have come to know as Easter. It is the day when we commemorate and celebrate 
the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. However, instead of Easter, I prefer the name Resurrection Sunday. Of course, like so many traditions held by the church, it would be difficult if not impossible, to get the name changed. Now, may I remind you, my sisters and brothers, that Resurrection Sunday is not about Easter bunnies, Easter eggs, or the giving of gifts. It is about celebrating the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the first resurrection Sunday. Now, with that in our minds this morning, let's journey back to that first resurrection Sunday morning. Let's look in on the events at the tomb of Jesus that day and see what happened and what it means for you and me. Point number one, the approach of the women. The approach of the women. We see that in verse one. Now, Matthew records the fact that two women came that morning. The other gospel writers reveal the fact that others came also. Now, there is no contradiction. They probably arrived as part of different groups. However, they came. They were sad, defeated, and discouraged. Some had witnessed and others had heard of the death of Jesus on the cross. And they were coming to pay their last respects to the body of the Lord. Now as we consider their motives for coming we can see what they were doing early that Sunday morning. Note, some came to look. Some came to look. Maybe they were coming to pray, to pray or to meditate near the place where his body had been buried. Maybe they were coming to make sure that everything was in order at the tomb. Whatever the reason, we are told that they came to see the sepulcher. Next, some came to labor. Some came to labor. Mark chapter 16 and verse 1 and St. Luke chapter 24 and verse 1. Now these verses teach these verses teach is that some of the women came to perform one last labor of love for the Lord Jesus. They came to finish anointing his body for burial. They wanted to serve him for one last time. Next, some came to linger. Some came to linger. St. John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. 
Now these verses tell us that Mary Magdalene lingered at the tomb after the others had already gone away. Now here was a woman that owed much to Jesus. There had been a time in her life when she had been possessed by seven demons. Mark chapter 16 and verse 9. Her life had been radically changed by Jesus and she loved him more than life itself. If you can remember, she was one of the last at the cross. St. Matthew chapter 27, verses 55 and 56. And she was the first to see him after he had risen from the dead. Mark chapter 16 and verse 9. She loved him so much for what he has done for her. Surely her heart was broken that morning, but still she came to love him and worship him. Note, if you please, can you identify with these women? Thank God for those people who just want to be near him. Thank God for those who just want to love him and worship him and serve him faithfully. It is to those people to whom Jesus reveals himself. It is to those people whose heart burn with the flame of love for the risen Savior. Now, isn't it odd that it was just the women just the women that came to the tomb that morning. Of course, if it weren't for the faithful, godly ladies in the church, mm -hmm, most would have to shut their doors. Say amen, women. But thank God for redeemed women who love Jesus with all their hearts. I wonder if you're praying with me. Point number two, the activity of the angel. The activity of the angel. We see that in verse two through eight. Note, if you please, Humanity was the only one that sent ambassadors to the tomb early that morning. Heaven also sent an emissary to proclaim the good news that Jesus was not dead but alive. Let's look in on the activities of the angel that first resurrection Sunday. He rolled back the stone. He rolled back the stone. That was obstacle one removed. Now Mark 16 and 1 tells us that while the women 
made their way to the tomb to finish preparing the body for burial, one of their concerns was how to remove the stone. Now that stone represented the finality of death. For them that stone was an exclamation point at the end of the sentence of death. That stone said, he is gone forever. But thank God, somebody say thank God. Thank God, thank God the Lord mm -hmm, took care of that stone. Not to let Jesus out. He was long gone before that angel ever arrived on the scene. Listen, that stone was rolled away so that men could look into the tomb and see that it was forever empty. This is one of the obstacles to faith. The stone was rolled away. Next he removed the soldiers. He removed the soldiers. That's obstacle to remove. Matthew chapter 27 verses 62 through 66 through 66 tell us that the chief priests and the Pharisees were concerned that the prophecies of Jesus might actually come true and they wanted a guard to be posted at the tomb it is sad I mean it is sad when right infidels know more about the Bible and believe it more than people who claim to know Jesus. So they sealed it with Pilate's seal and they posted a company of guards at the door. That detachment of Soldiers stood as an obstacle between the saints and their entrance into the tomb of Jesus. However, when this angel appeared, he made short work of the soldiers. These battle-hardened men fainted at his feet like a bunch of silly teenagers. Another obstacle of faith, another obstacle to faith, the guard at the tomb had been rolled away. Next, he reminded the saints, he reminded the saints, Obstacle three removed. Now, as this angel began to speak to the women that morning, the greatest obstacle of all was removed. Unbelief. His message inspired them to, aha, uh -huh, Inspire them to believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Notice what he reminded them of. Verse 5. He reminded them of the past. He reminded them of the past. They were reminded of the crucifixion. Of course, these ladies 
needed no such reminder. They have both been there. St. John chapter 19 and verse 25. Still the fact of his death is emphasized. This reminds us of the importance of the death of Jesus on the cross. His death provided the sacrifice that was needed to cleanse sinners from their sins and to make them right with God. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 and 5. That is verses 4 through 6, pardon me. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22. Verse 6, he reminded them of the present. He reminded them of the present. The angel tells them, you are here at this tomb. But Jesus isn't. He is risen. Woo! As he said. My friends, this was the greatest proclamation ever to fall upon human ears. His death was the perfect eternal payment for sin. But his resurrection was God's receipt for the full amount. You see, a dead, a dead savior can save no one. But a living savior, woo, I said, but a living savior can offer salvation to all who come to him by faith. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Listen. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it who is finished. John Chapter 19 and verse 30. When he rose from the dead, God the Father said, I am satisfied. Woo! I am satisfied. Now Jesus had proven that he was who he had claimed to be all along, all along. St. John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26 declares, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Help me somebody. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now he can declare his victory over death. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Now we can look to him by faith and be confident of his power to save. Acts chapter 16 and verse 31. Verse 6, the angel Reminded them of the promise. He reminded them of 
the promise. They are reminded that his resurrection should not have taken them by surprise. After all, it was what he said that he would do all along. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 40 and Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. You see, the resurrection should not have caught them off guard. The resurrection should have not have taken them by surprise. They should have been looking or they should have been holding worship services outside the tomb early that morning. They should have been there ready to meet him when he came out woo, of the tomb. Again, I will remind you that it seemed like the Jewish leaders had more faith in the promises of Jesus than did his own disciples. Next, he reminds them, that is the angel, of the proof. Of the proof. The angel's invitation is to them to look into the tomb and see for it and see for themselves that Jesus is gone. Later, when the Peter and John arrived there, John records the fact that the linen clothes had been rap about Christ's bound yeah. were lying there like an empty cocoon while the napkin that had been about his face was folded in a place by itself. This sight caused John to believe in the resurrection. Now, there are two reasons why the appearance and arrangement of the grave clothes are of such importance. First, there was no sign of human intervention. Pray God Almighty. You see, if someone had taken the body, they could not have removed it through the grave clothes. And it is likely that they wouldn't have removed them anyway. Great God Almighty. They would have taken the body with them still wrapped in the clothes or still wrapped in the claws that pounded neither would they have taken the time to fold the napkin but it too would have been taken with the body or at least it would have been discarded in a half-hearted manner in the empty tomb was a scene of perfect order. This suggested a resurrection had taken place. Now, second was the ancient Oriental custom of the napkin when a man with his servants were eating a meal. He would often use his napkin to single them during the course of the meal. If he left the table 
people uh, and warmed his napkin up, uh, it meant uh, that he was finished uh, and would not be back. Uh, if, however, uh, he neatly uh, folded the napkin, uh, it told his servants uh, that he was only, uh, that he was stepping away uh, for a moment, uh, but he would be back. Uh, great God Almighty, Jesus uh, was telling his disciples, uh, I may be out of your sight right now but I'll be right back do I have any help to you when Peter and John around at the tomb they feared the worst perhaps they thought Robert had come or that the Jews had taken his body away even Mary missed the napkin and suppose the gardener had removed the body of the Lord. Yet John, yeah, yet John, who had been raised with servants, probably knew this custom and quickly grabbed the meaning. Now, verse 7 and 8, the angel reminded them of the plan. They were to go and share the good news that Jesus was risen from the dead. Those disciples who were cowering in fear that the next cross might be their own were to receive the glorious news that Jesus had conquered death and was alive forevermore. What glorious message those women were given that day. It was a message of hope. It was a message of life. It was a message of victory. It was a message that everyone needed to hear. And it still is. Yeah. May we, I said may we, never forget that the message of that tomb is as fresh today as it was then. Do you remember that day? 
those of you who desire prayer, will you please remain standing? Those of you who desire prayer, will you please remain standing?
Welcome back. I know you were encouraged by that word. And if you were encouraged, we simply ask that you just leave us a comment and let us know how the word of God has impacted your life. And if this ministry is being a blessing to you, we simply ask that you go ahead and share it. Share it with your family and friends. And let them know what this ministry is doing for you. And prayerfully, it'll do the same for them. So we ask you to stay in contact with us. Simply go to our website at ebcwinemington.org. And on the contact page, just simply leave us your email so that we can stay in contact with you and let you know what's going on here at the ministry. We're also on social media. We're on Facebook at EBC Wilmington. I want you to go ahead and just click the follow button. We're also on YouTube at Ebenezer Baptist Church of Wilmington, Delaware. And certainly would make our hearts feel so glad if you go ahead and just hit that subscribe button. So once again, it was our pleasure to have you to be a part of our online worship experience. We truly hope that your life is being blessed by this ministry, by the Word of God. We thank you so much for all of your support that you've been giving us since we've been online. We certainly appreciate it. If you're ever in the area, we invite you to stop by and worship with us. We're at 2200 North Claymont Street here in Wilmington, Delaware. And we've taken every precaution to make sure that your worship experience is a safe experience. So once again, happy Resurrection Sunday. Until next time, take care, be safe, and God bless.